A serious warning from Senator Ron Johnson about the border. Former FBI Homeland Security agents all drafted this letter and they say there are serious concerns that we have that you should have as well. You can see Johnson posted this. He says this is a sobering letter from former FBI, DHS, and other law enforcement officials that describes the chilling reality of why the POTUS open border is such a clear and present danger to America. Bill Malugin, who has spent a ton of time at the border, is telling us that there is a plan that is a foot and it sounds disgusting, meaning they would allow 5,000 people to come in every day. Like that's allowed. So they're contemplating the amount of illegality, the amount of criminality that will be acceptable to them. The number should be zero, obviously, but they're allowing 5,000 a day. But here's the letter from former law enforcement. Let's see who is on the list. We've got this guy, Kevin Brock, assistant director from the Directorate of Intelligence. He's retired from the FBI. We've got this guy, also retired from the FBI, Criminal Investigative Division. This guy is from the Terrorist Screen Center. This guy's from the Director Criminal Cyber Response and Services Branch. This is Counterintelligence. He is from Training and Customs and Border Protection, former. This guy's Chicago Police Department, also FBI, Special Agent in Charge in Philly. FBI Special Agent in Charge, Milwaukee, Assistant Director from LA, and the Assistant Director from the Inspection Division, also retired from the FBI. So a lot of former law enforcement people, and here is what they say. Sent over to Mike Johnson on the House of Representatives, Chuck Schumer in the Senate, Mike Turner, Intelligence, Mark Warner, Mark Green, and Gary Peters. They say, all right, Congress people, as former senior executives of the FBI with deep experience combating dangers to the nation, we write to express our concern about a specific threat that may be one of the most pernicious ever to menace the United States. The danger arises from the nature of the threat itself. Wars and espionage and bombings and riots are sadly familiar delivery systems of instability, intimidation, and insecurity. The country has failed face these and more throughout its history and is held together, though not without struggle. Now, the threat we call out today is new and unfamiliar. In its modern history, the U.S. has never suffered an invasion of the homeland, and yet one is unfolding now. Military-aged men from across the globe, many from countries or regions not friendly to the United States, are landing in waves on our soil by the thousands, not by splashing ashore from a ship or parachuting from a plane, but rather by foot across a border that has been accurately advised around the world as largely unprecedented protected with ready access granted. It would be difficult to overstate the danger represented by the presence inside our border of what is comparatively a multi-division army of young single adult males from hostile nations and regions whose background, intent, and allegiance is completely unknown. They include individuals encountered by border officials and then possibly released into the country along with a shockingly high estimate of, quote, gotaways, meaning those who have evaded apprehension. In light of such a daunting and unprecedented penetration by uninvited foreign actors, it is reasonable to assert that the country possesses dramatically diminished national security at this time. The nation's military and laws and other natural protective barriers that have provided traditional security in the past have been thoroughly circumvented in the past three years. In 2021, the demographics of those crossing the porous southern boundary started to shift. Young men from around the world traveling alone and holding questionable motivations dramatically increased in number to become the most common profile of those breaching the nation's borders. A startling number have been found on the terrorist watch list or are from countries that are designated as state sponsors of terror distinctly unfriendly to the U.S. This is particularly alarming in light of the Hamas terror attack in Israel. Those of us who have fought terrorism know that historically successful terror attacks invite mimicry. We know as well that terror leaders intentionally cultivate throngs of young men possessing certain easily manipulated personality types to carry out atrocities. They say it is so stark to say so, but having a large number of young males now within our borders who could begin attacking gatherings of unarmed citizens in imitation of 10-7 at the behest of a foreign terror group must be considered a distinct possibility. We would be remiss not to call out this potentially grave threat in the most direct terms. The warning lights are blinking. That's ominous. And yet, this very real concern does not seem to be getting the focus it logically deserves. The director of the FBI has correctly assessed an elevated threat level since 10-7, but relatively little discussion has been followed highlighting unsecured borders as a significant cause of this dangerous environment. It is troubling and a troubling concern that needs illumination, not avoidance. Any violation of the nation's immigration laws increases risks, of course, but the surge in numbers of single military-age males descending upon American cities and towns is alarming and perilous. Additionally, now they are not just from terror-linked regions, but they're from China, they're from Russia as well. Hostile adversaries of the U.S. with aspirations to devastate the national infrastructure. And for these reasons, elements of this recent surge are likely no accident 
accident or coincidence. These men are potential operators in what appears to be an accelerated and strategic penetration, a soft invasion designed to gain internal access to a country that cannot be invaded militarily in order to inflict catastrophic damage if and when enemies deem it necessary. The new reality, this never seen before threat deserves greater attention. The borders need to be secured against these young men and those already here illegally must be identified and removed without delay. This will take coordinated, cooperative efforts of the FBI, DHS, and the rest of the intelligence community to achieve. We encourage these actions and much greater congressional attention. The country has been invaded, an invasion that will continue as long as the nation's enemies perceive it will be tolerated. Until it is stopped, the United States is extraordinarily less safe and secure. Now, knowing all this, it would be a shameful tragedy and travesty if some terrible attack, a preventable attack, were to occur against innocent Americans or the infrastructure that keeps the nation safe and functioning, saying the government will have failed grievously in its duty to protect. Sincerely, all these guys signing off on this from the FBI and elsewhere, ringing the alarm bells on what we already know and see. And so what is our government attempting to do here? They're trying to pass a new border deal. So this is from Bill Malugin, who has done great work at the border for quite some time. He says the Senate border deal de details. Per a source familiar I just had a call with, he says there's going to be mandatory detention of all single adults. So they got to get grab everybody. There'll be a mandatory shutdown of the border in quotes. Once an average daily migrant encounter hits 5,000. Okay. So 5,000 people attempt, then there's a shutdown. Now this 5,000 number includes a, an app. So if they come at ports of entry, 8, 1400 allowed, and then 3,600 illegal crossings per day are allowed to come in. Then they shut down the border, whatever that means. So once the 5,000 threshold is hit, then we have new authority, which means the border patrol would then remove anyone they catch without processing, right? So once it's, once they come in, then they kick them out. They would not get to request asylum. They would be immediately removed, which is crazy. Like that's exactly what should happen for everyone. This includes removals back to Mexico and deportations to home countries. This would be a massive change from current policy, which says that now they all can claim asylum. Now under this new authority, they're not processed. They're just automatically shut down, which is great. It means they can do that. Now the shutdown also takes effect if there are 8,500 migrants in a single day. The shutdown would not lift the next day. It would not lift until the total encounters are under 75% of the 5,000 threshold. This means the shutdown authority would not lift until two weeks of an average of less than 3,750 a day. Then they can open it up again. Some family units will be released. New authority to immediately remove them will be determined within six months. The U.S. will need an agreement with Mexico to take back them. No deal yet on that. Biden approves the deal and he's ready to sign it right now. And do you know why? It's because the number officially from the government would always be under 5,000, right? Like they would just say it. It's under 5,000. Oh no, it's like, why do we need to shut the border down? It's weird. We only had 4,950 immigrants today and we had 4,952 immigrants yesterday. And before that, we had 4,991 immigrants, but we never hit 5,000. So we never have to shut the border down. What a stupid bill. Either secure the border or don't. Do you negotiate about how much illegal drugs you're allowed to be in possession of? Why don't we pass all of our criminal laws that just says, well, okay, you can have a small amount of fentanyl, but anything over an, a, a certain amount is now illegal. Uh, no, it's either illegal or not. Are you allowed to come across the border legally or not? Not just will accept a certain amount of illegality. How much domestic violence is allowed? How much domestic violence do you, would you like to criminally allow? 5,000 of those? We're going to start enforcing domestic violence after we've had 200 domestic violence cases. Then we'll start taking care of it. What are we talking about? Okay, so Ron Johnson was responding to this and he, you know, there's still questions about the deal. He is explaining what his take is. Mind is Rube Goldberg. Mm. This doesn't have to be complex. This should actually be pretty simple. Yeah. Um, but again, because we haven't seen text, really all I have are questions. These are questions I have that haven't been answered, and I would suggest these are questions you ought to be asking Senate leadership about this bill. The first one. So they've set this threshold, these thresholds at 4,000 and 5,000. Obama's Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, I think in 2016, after he'd already left office, said that 1,000 people a day, when he was in office, he said that was a bad day. Once he left office, he said 1,000 people a day overwhelm the system. So if 1,000 people a day overwhelm the system, and that is true, that's still true today, why wouldn't we set the threshold at a thousand rather than four or five thousand? Because they want more coming now, in. If you're going to pass something like this, and, and by the way, in, in, our, in our conference meeting, when uh, Senator Langford, who again I think is the, the perfect guy to do the negotiation, he, he's knowledgeable about this. He, 
gets along well with Democrats. The, the problem is our leader, Leader McConnell, is really the, the, the stage manager of this negotiation. And as Senator Scott talked about, without consulting the conference, he took away most of our leverage by saying that we would not even ask to tie Ukraine funding to actually securing the border. But anyway... Uh, when Senator Langford was asked, what is the goal of this? It wasn't, the answer wasn't to secure the border. Obviously. It was to give the next president the tools he would need or she would need to secure the border. Well, that wasn't our expectation. I'm sure that's not the public's expectation. No. Um, th that's important because part of my problem with the 4,000 threshold that's discretionary and then the 5,000 that's mandatory sh shutting down the border. And my first question on that is, well, how are you going to do that? Do you have the personnel to actually shut down the border and do what you contemplate? Okay, that hasn't been answered. But the 4,000 discretionary level, is that going to hinder the next president? W will the left who wants an open border that causes this problem, will, will they take the next president to court if he wants to shut down the border at 1,000? That question hasn't been answered. The other questions, I, you know, we get indications of uh, the negotiators said, you know, this is going to cost a lot of money. And we have indications that it's going to cost a lot of money because, first of all, we're going to have to hire a lot more Border Patrol agents, I guess, to process up to four or 5,000 people a day. I mean, isn't that stupid? I mean, shouldn't we shut down the border and keep it under 1,000 yeah, so it doesn't overwhelm the current system as opposed to stand up a system? That and then you don't need all those extra agents. Weird. You don't need all the extra judges, all the agents, all the buses, all the onboarding stuff. If you just shut the border down, they can accept four or 5,000 people a day. We're told they're going to fund sanctuary cities. Isn't that stupid? Yes. I mean, take better care of illegal immigrants, and that's just going to cause more to come. So again, there's just so many aspects of this bill, as we understand it, that make no sense whatsoever. We're asking the questions. We're not getting the answers. You ought to be asking those questions. Maybe you can get the answers. But again, what this chart describes is, first of all, cause and effect, going back to the Obama administration, which, which started all this, by the way, how he abused uh, prosecutorial discretion. That should be done on a case-by-case -case basis, but he gave that out to hundreds of thousands of people under DACA. That sparked all of this. We've been dealing with it ever since. And now the Biden administration is abusing uh, parole, which is also supposed to be done case by case basis. Right. Up until this administration, about 5,000 awards of parole a year. Now we're granting it to hundreds of thousands of people. Crazy. Uh, that abuse has to stop. But as Senators Lee and Scott both said, Trump, under existing law, he secured the border. That represents about 570 people a day. Wow. Biden, when he got into office, exploded the border, opened it up, and if we normalize four to five thousand, that's what the chart would look like. That's completely unacceptable, and I just put next to it. This was Obama. That was during you know 2013, 14 time period. This is a level of immigration that President Obama described as a humanitarian crisis. It was. It is. This is completely unacceptable, and from my standpoint as a Republican senator, I need to know from the negotiators. Why is that not going to be the nor new normalized level of immigration under this Rube Goldberg negotiation? Because that's what they want. They want monstrous amounts of people coming across. And just think about those numbers, right? 5,000 a day. Like, I understand you're not going to get to zero, right? It's a big border. There's a lot of people coming across. But you'll get back down to a low amount, right? If you target zero, then yeah, you probably have 500 people that maybe come across like you saw under Trump. And you say, okay, are you actually claiming asylum? What's your basis for that? Let me see some proof of that. What's the evidence? Okay, now we'll process you, right? Because that's what the law says. But Joe is not doing that. And the idea that we're going to give him more power, more money, more discretion, more authority, all this stuff, and he's going to do something about this? No, not going to happen. So that's Ron Johnson. Grateful for him ringing the bells on that one. Ted Cruz was also concerned. And Mike Johnson says it's basically dead on arrival. But here's what Ted Cruz says about it. He is from the great state uh, of Texas. Let me break Texas. that into two pieces. You, you started by what Biden is saying. And I'll tell you what Biden is saying on that. There's a technical term for that. <laughs> that's called a lie. And it's not just a little bit of a lie. It is a brazen, it is the definition of chutzpah. Here's why. When Joe Biden became president, he inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. He inherited great success. And he deliberately broke the border. He opened up the border. Three decisions caused this crisis. His first week in office, Joe Biden halted construction of the border wall. 
He reinstated catch and release and he pulled out of the incredibly successful Remain in Mexico agreement. And those decisions caused illegal immigration to skyrocket. Now, the reason he's lying, he doesn't need more money. Those decisions, he could, Biden could solve this problem tomorrow. He doesn't want to. So are you saying that, that, that there's no reason to have a border bill? We, act, we don't need a border bill. We, we achieved the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years under Donald Trump. There you what go. was different is you had a president that wanted to secure the border. Joe Biden is defying the law right now. And, and so you asked about the border deal. Listen, I'm all for using every leverage we have to try to force Biden to comply with the law. But this deal doesn't do that. This yeah. deal was negotiated with Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer doesn't want to secure the border. They, he looks at 9.6 million illegal immigrants and what he sees is future Democrat voters and he's willing to overlook the death, the suffering, the women and children being brutalized by human traffickers. All of those are acceptable prices to pay for Democrats to stay in power. I mean, All right, so Ted Cruz from the great state of Texas, I agree with him. I would rather see no border bill than that border bill because the idea is Trump's right around the corner and we want to give him the authority to do what he has already done. Now, good news is it sounds like it might be dead on arrival when it lands over in the House of Representatives. This came over from the AP, says Joe Biden pressed on Friday, wants Congress to sign this garbage deal. But Mike Johnson said the compromise could be dead on arrival in his chamber. The Democratic president said in a statement late Friday that the policies proposed would be the toughest and the fairest set of reforms that our country has ever seen. And he says he pledged to use a new emergency authority to quote, shut down the border as soon as he could sign it into law. Biden's embrace of the deal and Republican resistance is another election year shift. So they're going to try to blame Republicans. They say that Senate Republicans had initially insisted the border policy policy changes be included in an emergency request for funding, but the Senate deal collapsed in the aftermath. So we'll see what happens with the House. Hopefully Mike Johnson holds the line and doesn't give in to the Senate border disaster.